Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering woke maniac suit for smearing child as racist. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from the New York Post, family of nine-year-old Kansas City Chiefs fan sues Deadspin for defamation. Also from the New York Post, Deadspin quietly tweaks viral story on nine-year-old Chiefs fan's blackface after his parents threaten legal action. And the original article from Deadspin is being hosted on MSN.com. The NFL needs to speak out against the Kansas City Chiefs fan in blackface native headdress. And the despicable sports writer who did this story attacking this child whom he made clear he knew was either a small child or a young adult is Karen Phillips. He is a sports journalist. He does know what the colors are of the Kansas City Chiefs. He knew what this kid was doing. He decided to make an example out of this child and now they're getting sued over it. From the New York Post, family of nine-year-old Kansas City Chiefs fan accused of blackface sues Deadspin for defamation. The family had threatened to sue Deadspin. Now they're following through on the threat. The family of the nine-year-old Kansas City Chiefs fan accused by Deadspin of wearing blackface filed a lawsuit Tuesday against the outlet, claiming it defamed and caused irreversible damage to the young football fan. He's a nine-year-old. Holden Armetta's parents, Shannon and Raul, allege that Deadspin intentionally published a defamatory article exposing, quote, the family to a barrage of hate, including death threats. Quote, the article falsely alleged that Holden had found a way to hate black people and the Native Americans at the same time. It alleged that Holden's parents, Shannon and Raul, taught Holden racism and hate at home, the lawsuit filed in Delaware states. It intentionally painted a picture of the Armenta family as anti-black, anti-Native American bigots who proudly engaged in the worst kind of racist conduct motivated by their family's hatred for black and Native Americans. This guy, Karen Phillips, is a journalist who writes about sports. He doesn't write about culture or race. He had no business writing this article in the first place. The lawsuit was filed following weeks of legal threats by the Armentas who demanded that the sports news site and its senior writer, Karen Phillips, issue a retraction for his story headline, quote, the NFL needs to speak out against the Kansas City Chiefs fan in blackface and native headdress. The article included a photo of the boy that was broadcasted on CBS Sports during the November 26th game against the Las Vegas Raiders, showing him standing in profile and appearing to wear blackface and a traditional Native American headdress. The piece did not mention, however, that the other half of the boy's face was painted bright red, depicting two of the Chiefs' team colors. That was the colors of the team. According to the Armentas, Deadspin and Phillips specifically used the grab to maliciously and wantonly attack a nine-year-old boy and his parents for Phillips' own race-drenched political agenda. Phillips alleged that the boy had managed to, quote, disrespect two groups of people at once. In the article, which has since been tagged with a community note on X branding it purposely deceiving. The story sparked immediate controversy with the Armentas leading the charge against Deadspin. The boy's parents shared numerous pictures of Holden with his face clearly painted with two separate colors and shared the shocking detail that the boy himself is Native American with his own grandfather sitting on the board of the Chumash tribe. Literally, his grandfather sits on a tribe of Native Americans. The Armentas repeatedly demanded that Deadspin retract the article and apologize to the family, but the outlet did neither the lawsuit states. Instead, Deadspin quietly amended the story, removing the image of Holden and included an editor's note saying the publication, quote, regrets any suggestion that we were attacking the nine-year-old boy. The damage was already done, however, the family claimed, with Holden being called lots of bad words, including a mother effer online, as well as being threatened with death via a wood chipper. Quote, Deadspin has gone too far. Holden should not have to live with his face being plastered on social media, alongside false and defamatory accusations of racist conduct. His parents should not be forced to live with the false and defamatory allegation that they are teaching hate in the home, the lawsuit states. Can you imagine the nerve of this guy saying that families are teaching hate in the home, literally based on absolutely nothing, 
as an expert in sports, knowing sports, knowing the team, knowing the team's colors, and not thinking twice about attacking a child and the family. Well, the Armenta family brings this lawsuit to set the record straight and to hold Deadspin accountable for willfully spreading incendiary lies about a nine-year-old child who it chose as a vehicle for its race-baiting agenda. The family is asking for unspecified damages and other remedies as the court may deem just and proper. They have an excellent case here. Here's what Deadspin originally said about this child. The NFL needs to speak out against the Kansas City Chiefs fan in blackface and native headdress by Karen J. Phillips. And excuse my interruptions as I do this because I think I'm going to get pretty angry about this guy. It takes a lot to disrespect two groups of people at once. But on Sunday afternoon in Las Vegas, a Kansas City Chiefs fan found a way to hate black people and the Native Americans at the same time. And here's the correction on a tweet where they're showcasing this picture from the article. This Kansas City Chiefs fan is not wearing blackface. The other side of his face is painted red and it's to show the team colors for the Chiefs. You could almost understand if this guy wasn't a sports journalist, but he is a sports journalist. He does know better. And I can't believe he did this, especially to a child. The image of a Chiefs fan in blackface wearing a native headdress during a road game leads to so many unanswered questions. Why did the camera person give this fan the attention? Why did the producer allow that camera angle to be aired at all? Is that fan a kid or teenager or a young adult? Despite their age, who taught that person that what they were wearing was appropriate? You know what? Sometimes the most important thing in the world is not how you feel and not how you interpret things. Sometimes it doesn't matter how you feel or how you interpret things. You don't have to use your opportunity to abuse power and go after a child just because it makes you feel a certain way. It's not reality. You know as a sports writer it's not reality. How could you do a thing like this? A sports writer knows the colors of these teams. I don't know the colors of all the NFL teams. How would I know that? I'm not a sports writer. I have to research and see, okay, who wrote this article in Deadspin? Was it really in their sports section? Was it really someone who knows better than what he's saying in this article to go out and use that platform and try to create a problem for a child? Even though he knows the colors are black and red, if you only see half of the child and you see the black half, do you not go and check and see well, what if the other side's red? But is that not good enough? Because even though the child has Native American ancestry, he can't get excited about the Chiefs and wear a headdress? How dare this guy do this? Back to the article. The answers to all those questions lead back to the NFL. While it isn't the league's responsibility to stop racism and hate from being taught in the home, they are a league that has relentlessly participated in prejudice. If the NFL had outlawed the chop at Chiefs games, and been more aggressive in changing the team's name, then we wouldn't be here. There's no place for a franchise to be called the Chiefs in a league that's already eradicated Redskins. The cultural visionary continues. Quote, there's no pretty way to mascot people. Amanda Blackhorse, a Native American activist and organizer of a pregame protest rally told USA Sports earlier this year. This is what happens when you ban books, stand against critical race theory which is a garbage, hateful theory that no one should support, and try to erase centuries of hate. You give future generations the ammunition they need to evolve and recreate racism better than before. But we are committed to inspire change in the social justice work that inspires change for the long term. Anna Isaacson, NFL Senior Vice President of Social Responsibility, told the Associated Press back in 2021, this was the time when the league was beginning to allow players to wear decals on their helmets that read Stop Hate, Black Lives Matter, Inspire Change, and Say Their Stories as part of the NFL's social justice initiatives. Notice how it's usually referred to as social justice and not racial justice as a way to soften the hate? It's an orchestrated way to distract you from the core issue. Your core issue is to write about sports. That's what you're being paid to do. That's what, theoretically, you have a background in. Write sports. Stop trying to write culture. However, the ultimate insult from the league can be seen during each game as end racism and it takes all of us are sketched into the end zones. Do you know how big your balls have to be to say that racism should be ended when you have a racist past like the NFL? 
It's as if Jim Trotter and Brian Flores aren't actively suing them for alleged racism right now, as the attorneys general in New York and California are also investigating them for similar allegations. This is from a movement that says only certain races can be racist. You can hate other people for their skin color. You just have to be a certain skin color to be entitled to do that. No, you have no credibility here. The idea that it takes all of humanity to end racism is not only asinine, but insulting and infuriating. By doing that, you're taking away the responsibility and necessity of accountability from the ones who created it and actively participated in it. Like you, right now, attacking a race of people. It's also cruel to expect the oppressed to assist their oppressors in the termination of their own oppression. This is a sports article I'm reading, by the way. This is supposed to be sports. And if you're wondering if the NFL is delusional enough to believe that their end zone slogans are making a difference, you're correct. The league is beyond sensitive when it comes to their message. In the preseason, there was a rumor floating around that play football would be the new motto etched on the field. When Deadspin contacted the league about it, we received a prompt response saying otherwise. Well, there's been no change from previous years beginning with the regular season, Clubs will have an end zone stencils featuring, quote, it takes all of us and end racism, wrote Brian McCarthy, the league's vice president of communications to Deadspin, in an email exchange. Quote, play football was featured for preseason as part of a league initiative. As of now, the league hasn't released a statement on what took place in the stands in Las Vegas on Sunday. That photo of that fan floating around on the internet is beyond a bad look for a league while simultaneously being what should be expected from the NFL. Well, the NFL stands with the black community, the players, clubs, and fans. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell once said, quote, confronting systemic racism with tangible and productive steps is absolutely essential. We will not relent in our work and we will redouble our efforts to be catalysts for the urgent and sustainable change that our society and community so desperately need. Three years after Goodell made that comment, the league is worse off than it was when the commissioner was scrambling during America's racial awakening in 2020. He apologized to Colin Kaepernick, allowed players to kneel in peaceful protests, and promised that things would change. Nothing has. And after what we saw on Sunday, it feels like nothing ever will. Coming from Deadspin, this version of their article has the updates they made after they were threatened with legal action, it wasn't good enough because now they're getting sued, but here's what they had to say. Editor's note, on November 27th, Deadspin published an opinion piece criticizing the NFL for allowing a young fan to attend the Kansas City Chiefs game against the Las Vegas Raiders on November 26th wearing a traditional Native American headdress and based upon the available photo what appeared to be blackface paint. How is the NFL supposed to be policing, literally? The NFL is supposed to be policing every stadium and checking people and making sure, okay, you don't have anything that would offend anyone of any race or cultural background and we're gonna check you at the door and make sure you don't have this. Unfortunately, the article drew attention to the fan, though our intended focus was on the NFL and its checkered history on race, an issue which our writer has covered extensively for Deadspin. Three years ago, the Chiefs banned fans from wearing headdresses in Arrowhead Stadium, as well as face painting that appropriates American Indian cultures and traditions. The story's intended focus was the NFL and its failure to extend those rules to the entire league. We regret any suggestion that we were attacking the fan or his family. To that end, our story was updated on December 7th to remove any photos, tweets, links, or otherwise identifying information about the fan. We have also revised the headline to better reflect the substance of the story. So these maniacs changed the headline from the NFL needs to speak out against the Kansas City Chiefs fan in blackface Native American headdress. The fan's a child. They want the NFL to speak out against the child. Okay, and they changed it to read this. The NFL must ban Native American headdress and culturally insensitive face paint in the stands. Yet they claim they never intended to target the fan. Well, the headline obviously clearly targets the fan. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.